Dr. Benjamin Santer is one of the world's most respected climate scientists. He is a researcher at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, a frequent expert witness before the U.S. Congress, and a tireless researcher. In a recent lecture at California State University at Chico, he addressed one of the enduring myths of climate denial. Okay, very quickly here, I want to tackle one particular myth. <clears throat> And I'm sure you've all heard about this, this, this uh, claim which has surfaced uh, quite a lot in the last couple of years that there's been no warming since 1998 and that computer models of the climate system are incapable of replicating this kind of behavior. <clears throat> I testified at this uh, hearing um, <clears throat> together with the late Steve Schneider in May 2010 and this, this particular claim, this is verbatim, was made by Professor Will Happer. Uh, we decided to do the science to look at this claim. I think it's important. <clears throat> in the case of all these kind of issues, to do the science. <laughs> see whether the claim has validity or not. So what you see here are observations of the temperature change of the lower troposphere again, the, the lowest five miles of Earth's atmosphere. This is from remote sensing systems in, uh, in California and you can see it's pretty noisy. Again, the start of the satellite record of atmospheric temperature change is uh, the late 1970s. This goes through to the end of 2010 here. And you can see that the, the period that uh, Professor Happer focused on and many others have focused on is this period after this big spike here. This spike is the big 97-98 El Nino event. El Ninos on average tend to warm the planet. So Essentially what Professor Happer was saying was there's, there's been no warming over this period here and climate models are incapable of replicating this kind of behavior. Well, the first thing to note is what are these brown lines? I fitted 10-year trends to overlapping segments of this 32-year time series and they're noisy. They bounce around a lot. You can see that uh, statistically uh, the most negative trend is actually near the beginning of the record not near the end of the record. And not surprisingly, the largest warming trend is the one that has an end point that stops near the big warm <laughs> event. So this illustrates you know, a key issue in climate science, signal and noise. There's a lot of noise on year-to-year -year time scales there. And typically, when we're trying to identify human effects on climate, we look at long sweeps of time. That's how we beat down the noise. You know, particularly if you choose the endpoints of the period that you look at, so you're starting near a high point and ending near a low point with uh, La Niñas, which cause cooling, uh, how informative is that? So if you do the same exercise, but you look at overlapping 20-year trends, you see that they're all positive, nothing negative here, and you've beaten down the range of trends by about a factor of four just by looking at a longer sweep of time. The analogy I like to use is if you looked at the minute by minute record of day trading on the Dow, you couldn't use that to make reliable inferences about the long term behavior of the Dow. In the same way, you can't really look at month to month or even year to year climate variability or even one cool decade where you've you know, judiciously or injudiciously picked the points to start near a, an El Nino and end near La Niña's. You, you can't really use that to make strong inferences about whether there is or is not a human effect on climate. 